So hitting up on your driver is gonna maximize your carry distance, it's gonna optimize your ball flight, and it's also likely gonna increase the consistency of your strike. So in this video, I'm gonna help you understand exactly how to hit up on the ball. I'm gonna be touching on some really easy tips and tricks that you can implement straight away that's gonna help increase that angle of attack and maximize that carry distance. I mean, it actually wasn't the best strike in all honesty, but I'll definitely take it. It's like 310 carry, nice. It was a little bit high on the face, which is why we got that extra carry. Let's have a look at angle of attack. So six and a half up, which, yeah, a little bit high on the face, so. Okay, so the first one and very basic one is gonna be ball position. That's one you've probably all heard of. And with driver, as you already know, we should be playing it further forward in our stance. But please just double check because there's a lot of people I see in here that kind of think they are, but actually when I put an alignment stick down, they're not. Because you just get used to what you're used to, right? So pop down an alignment stick. And as you know, for most of us, we're gonna want it just inside that left heel, which is gonna give us a pretty nice ball position for most people. Now, miss is gonna tie into that a little bit and I'll touch on that in a minute. But generally, just inside that left heel is a pretty good ball position, obviously, the swing is, is an arc, basically, so the further back that we're going to have it, chances are the more descending blow we're going to have. The further on in the stance we put it, the more likely we're going to hit it on that up and give it an ascending blow, which is exactly what we want, which is why we're going to put that ball position further forward. There's a couple of things to be mindful of. If you've got a left miss and you're really moving that ball position further and further and further forward, the likelihood is you're gonna make that left miss worse, so be, um, be careful of that. But if you have a right miss, moving that ball position further forward could be a big positive, because it's just gonna give yourself more time to square the club face before it actually gets to the ball. So that could be a positive as well. Another thing to be mindful of is the further forward that we typically move the ball. So if I move the ball way up here, outside my left foot, and now I've got, I've got to get my right hand to the ball. A lot of people will do that. So it'll create this really bad shoulder angle. So be cautious of that as well. The best tip I can give you from a setup perspective is if we just take our stance, neutral. So I feel like I'm just stood normally, square feet, square shoulders, just gonna bend over and take my golf posture. And now I wanna feel like I get my right hand to the club without allowing my right shoulder to move. So it's almost feeling like I'm coming from underneath a little bit. Just try not to let that right shoulder move as much as possible. Then we're gonna have a square chest, square shoulders, square feet. Everything's gonna be nice and aligned. So a few things there to bear in mind, but number one, get that ball position further up in the stance. Okay, so we've got that ball position nice and forward in the stance. The next, probably two, three, and four, I'm gonna kind of just tie into this little segment is it's all really just to do with setup as well. So we've got the ball position nice and far forward. The second thing is gonna be stance width. Now this is quite an important one and it can be a really good little tip for a lot of people if you have a narrow stance. So let's say I've got a really quite narrow stance, which you do see quite often with people. Very narrow stance, but I have got my ball position further forward in my stance. But I'm really at this position, I'm not that far behind the ball, my sternum, is not very far behind the ball. My head is not very far behind the ball. So the ball position may be further forward, but I'm not actually really behind the ball. But now if I take a big step back, now all of a sudden my sternum is way behind the ball, head's way behind the ball, and we've got a lot more space to stay behind it and increase that angle of attack. So now if we've got the ball forward, we've got a nice wide stance, just try and go as comfortable as you, as you can, maybe shoulder width, a little bit more than shoulder width. Now what we want to do is kind of try and get a little bit more of the weight on that right side and almost feel just a little bit of, of tilt as well, a little bit of spine tilt, feel like your head's just even further back. The more behind the ball we can generally stay, the more that's going to help to increase the angle of attack. And I'm kind of talking in extremes here to help people that really struggle with this. So the more that you feel like the weight is back, the more you feel that the head is back, the more the ball is, is far forward, the easier it's gonna be for you to stay behind the ball and hit up on it. So ball position further forward, nice wide stance, 
head back, weight back. Now we're in a pretty good setup to try and give a, a nice ascending blow to that ball. Okay, so the next one before I hit a couple and show you a couple of slow-mo clips, it's gonna be talking about wrist set and release. So it's quite a common trait on people that I see are a super steep, like a very downward angle of attack, which then ties into driver. Not the worst thing with irons. Obviously this is video is a driver. Obviously don't be doing all this with irons, please. Um, but people who have maybe a lot of wrist set early on in the swing, kind of pick it up, use the wrist a lot. And then therefore throughout the back swing, we've got just a lot of angle here, especially if a bit of a shorter swing, maybe a bit narrow and therefore not a lot of time in the downswing to actually try and get these angles out. And typically that'd be tied to a bit of a steep kind of right miss because we're not getting the face square, kind of holding the angles, hitting down on it a lot. So it's almost like for those people, if you are one of those people, or just if you're someone who does struggle with hitting down, releasing earlier or feeling like you kind of get those angles out earlier, that is definitely, just trying to be like a little bit of a whoosh, feel like I'm releasing it here just as I turn. My feeling is there. We're getting those angles out, which is going to help for a more ascending blow. Could lead to like more dynamic delivered loft, yes. But angle of attack typically is very linked to dynamic loft. So the more we hit up, generally the more dynamic loft we will deliver. That's when fitting comes in. Obviously, come and see me and we can actually look at all the numbers and try and see what loft drive ahead you need. But getting that angle of attack up, then get fitted for the right club is really the way to kind of optimize that, that distance and that, that ball flight. So yeah, get those angles out. And then finally, it's, it's just trying to stay in that position. And I've just noticed that I've pretty much got a snap hook on the screen, which is great. The entire video looks good. Um, it's trying to stay in that position. So we've got the ball position further forward. We've got a slightly wider stance. We've got that weight back. We've got that head back a little bit. We need to try and stay there. And, you know, I see a lot of people that even if we start in this position, straight away, boom, into the left side, head goes right over the ball. That generally is linked to a bit of like an over the top kind of move as well. As we come forward, the hands kind of tend to go, boom, boom. And it gets steep and then we end up standing up bad we want to try and stay where we are and turn which is difficult granted for a lot of people but my kind of feel is that i'm i am getting the weight into the left side like i'm feeling pressure in that left foot and i'm almost using that to generate that kind of hip turn so as i'm feeling the club drop in I'm feeling like my hips are turning. I'm almost using that ground force to turn the hips and then pushing up and back almost as I feel like I'm letting the club go releasing down the line. So it's almost like I'm feeling that left knee going back out the way and pushing up and back with that and then throwing the club down the line. So we don't, the big thing with this is the pressure's fine into the left side because we need to be able to use the ground, but it's not a that. It's kind of a turn and I'm, I've got enough pressure on that left foot to use the ground, start to turn, push up and back. And stay there and just launch it. It's keeping the head back is a really, really big one. Right, so the moment you've been waiting for, let's hit a couple and I'll just run through and recap kind of what, what we've spoken about. So for me, setup process, what we're looking at is I get the, the ball pretty much in line with my left toe, which I'm not saying you have to play it that far forward, just be aware of the ball position, make sure it's kind of left heel, that kind of region. So I'm lining up on my left toe, taking a nice wide stance back, kind of feeling myself, bringing myself behind that ball as much as possible. So we've got a nice wide stance, the ball position is further forward. I already naturally kind of have a little bit of tilt because that's just my normal driver setup. So I've got a little bit of tilt, 70% of weight in my right side. Nice wide stance, gonna try and come from underneath so my right shoulder doesn't get too over the top. I have got a bad habit of doing that sometimes. And then I'm gonna try and stay there and just really try and turn, almost feel that left hip pushing up and back. And that's gonna give me that time and space to just release, release down the line. All right, so now I've said all that, here comes an absolute top. I mean, it actually wasn't the best strike in all honesty, but I'll definitely take it. It's like 310 carry, nice. It was a little bit high on the face, which is why we got 
that extra carry. Let's have a look at angle of attack. So six and a half up, which, yeah, a little bit high on the face. So a bit of lack of ball speed, but six and a half up, which is maybe a little bit too much. And that probably ties into my ball position in all honesty. I probably should work on getting it a little bit further back. I mean, I do play it excessively far forward, but for me, I'll show you another one where I move the ball position further back. And again, just for your reference, side on that last one I had there, pretty much, that was pretty much my setup for that last one in terms of my ball position. And this one, I'm gonna feel there. So I'd probably still say it's just forward of center, but way further back. So just gonna tee it a little bit lower as well, otherwise I feel like I'm just gonna absolutely sky it. It just feels like I'm so over the top. I know it's far, I know it's still forward in my stance, but it feels horrendous to me. Feels like for me, as I turn, I'm gonna hit it there, and the face is like pointing over there. And that's why I always feel like I need it further forward. So it's almost like I feel like if I set up there, which is forward, but then I turn, I almost feel like that's where I wanna hit the ball, right? So that's why I set up there. If I set up here, I kind of feel like if I turn, it's just too early in my, for me in the way I feel like I'm moving it. It's too early, so I try not to hit a straight block right with this one. But it might be quite difficult. Again, wide stance, feeling like I'm coming from underneath. And the same swing. <laughs> T nearly hit me in the face. <laughs> 1.4 up. But actually, I'll take it because it was a little bit necky. 8.5 launch, 2400 backspin. Yeah, so I still hit 1.4 up. Like, I really struggle to hit down. I might just hit one more. Same again, ball position I feel is centre, it is forward of centre, but for me that feels horrendous. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what feels like is going to happen if I have that ball position there. I mean, the strike was actually better, tiny bit toe side. Yeah, but pretty good, two up. I mean, the interesting thing with both of those is that the first one was 164 ball speed and carried, it was definitely over 300 yards. And I know it was a little bit high in the face, which does jump up the carry a little bit, to be fair. But just as an example, I mean, that was 283 carry, the previous one, not sure what it was, but it was again, 280 something. You will gain a lot of carry yards from hitting up on the ball as well. They're like easy, easy carry yards. Just hit one more with my normal kind of setup, see if I can get a little bit of a better strike. Just get an accurate carry number. The strike was better. Yeah, it's about 302, 303, something like that. Which is about probably what I'd expect from a, a decent drive, kind of high 160s ball speed. Yeah, 30 launch, 22 backspin, right out the middle strike, 302 carry. Pretty solid, so I reckon it's a good 20 hours of extra carry just from me hitting up more on it. What was that? Six, six up again. Yeah, same as the first one. Right, so there you have it. A few easy tips and tricks that you can kind of implement to help you try and hit up on the ball. I am a fan of kind of actual physical training aids. So for example, getting an empty, uh, empty ball sleeve, putting that six inches in front of the ball, stuff like that and move it back as you're getting more confident try and actually think, oh, I've got to miss that. It's going to help you hit up. But implementing those little changes and getting on the range, you really should start to see a bit of a different ball flight. If you always struggle with hitting down, you're going to see that low ball flight. As soon as you start hitting up more, you're going to start to see more initial launch. It could well be at that point, it starts to climb too much as well. So it could be that the driver's not optimal for that delivery. So at that point, then it might be worth looking at kind of a custom fitting driver. But yeah, in the meantime, get grinding, keep working. Uh, I'm going to have another video come in uh, next about path, which is going to tie in with this ball position. So please go and watch that, especially if you're kind of trying to implement, you know, get more of a draw or get rid of your slice kind of thing. Ball position can definitely tie into that massively, as I've briefly touched on in this video. But in the next video, I'm going to touch on exactly what it does to your path and why it might be good or bad for you. So stay tuned for that. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this was helpful and quicker than normal, eh? <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.